The autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system regulates body temperature and coordinates cardiovascular, respiratory, digestive, excretory, and reproductive functions. The autonomic nervous system performs routine physiological adjustments to systems operating at the subconscious level. The autonomic nervous system, like the somatic nervous system, has afferent and efferent neurons. However, in the autonomic nervous system, the afferent pathways originate in visceral receptors, and the efferent pathways connect to visceral effector organs. In addition to the differences in receptor and effector organ location, the autonomic nervous system differs from the somatic nervous system in the arrangement of the neurons connecting the central nervous system to the effector organs. Visceral motor neurons in the central nervous system send axons called preganglionic fibers to synapse on ganglionic neurons whose cell bodies are located in autonomic ganglia located outside of the central nervous system. The axon of the ganglionic neuron is a postganglionic fiber that innervates peripheral organs. There are two major subdivisions in the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic division and the parasympathetic division. Visceral efferents from the thoracic and lumbar segments form the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. The sympathetic division, also known as the thoracolumbar division, can be thought of as the fight or flight system. Generally, the sympathetic division stimulates tissue metabolism, increases alertness, and prepares the body to deal with emergencies. Visceral efferents leaving the brainstem and sacral segments form the parasympathetic division. The parasympathetic division, also known as the craniosacral division, can be thought of as the rest and digest system. Generally, the parasympathetic division conserves energy and promotes sedentary activities. Both divisions affect target organs via neurotransmitters. Plasma membrane receptors determine whether the response will be stimulatory or inhibitory. In general, the neurotransmitter effects are as follows. All preganglionic terminals release acetylcholine and are excitatory. All postsynaptic parasympathetic terminals release acetylcholine and these effects may be excitatory or inhibitory. And most postganglionic sympathetic terminals release norepinephrine and these effects are usually excitatory. The sympathetic division consists of preganglionic neurons between the spinal cord segments T1 and L2. The ganglionic neurons of the sympathetic nervous system lie near the vertebral column and specialized neurons of the sympathetic division exist within the adrenal gland itself. There are two types of sympathetic ganglia, sympathetic chain ganglia and collateral ganglia. In the sympathetic chain ganglia, between spinal segments T1 and L2, each ventral root gives off a white ramus communicans with preganglionic fibers projecting to a sympathetic chain ganglion. These preganglionic fibers tend to undergo extensive divergence before they synapse with the ganglionic neuron. The synapse occurs within the sympathetic chain ganglia, within only one of the collateral ganglia, or within the adrenal medulla. Preganglionic fibers run between the sympathetic chain ganglia and interconnect them. Postganglionic fibers targeting visceral effectors in the body wall enter the gray ramus communicans and return to the spinal cord for distribution. Fibers that target thoracic cavity structures form the autonomic nerves that go directly to their visceral destination. There are three cervical, 11 to 12 thoracic, 2 to 5 lumbar, and 4 to 5 sacral ganglia and one coxygeal sympathetic ganglion in each sympathetic chain. Every spinal nerve has a gray ramus communicans that carries sympathetic postganglionic fibers. In summary, only thoracic and superior lumbar ganglia receive preganglionic fibers by the way of the rami. The cervical, inferior lumbar, and sacral chain ganglia receive preganglionic innervation from the collateral fibers of sympathetic neurons. And 
Every spinal nerve receives a gray ramus communicans from a ganglion of the sympathetic chain. In contrast, collateral ganglia involve the abdominopelvic viscera and receive sympathetic innervation from collateral ganglia. The abdominopelvic viscera receive sympathetic innervation via preganglionic fibers that pass through the sympathetic chain to synapse with collateral ganglia. The splanchic nerves innervate the hypogastric plexus and three collateral ganglia. The celiac ganglion innervates the stomach, duodenum, liver, pancreas, spleen, and kidney. The superior mesenteric ganglion innervates the small intestines and the initial segments of the large intestine. And the inferior mesenteric ganglion innervates the kidney, bladder, sex organs, and terminal portions of the large intestine. Some preganglionic fibers do not synapse as they pass through both the sympathetic chain and the collateral ganglia. Instead, they enter one of the adrenal glands and synapse on modified neurons within the adrenal medulla. These cells release norepinephrine and epinephrine, causing a prolonged sympathetic stimulation effect. In a crisis, the entire division responds in an event called the sympathetic activation. Its effects include the following. Increased alertness, feelings of energy and euphoria, increased cardiovascular and respiratory activity, a general increase in muscle tone, and mobilization of energy reserves. Stimulation of the sympathetic division has two distinctive results. First, the release of norepinephrine, or in some cases acetylcholine, at neurovector junctions. And two, the secretion of epinephrine and norepinephrine into general circulation. There are two classes of sympathetic receptors that are stimulated by both norepinephrine and epinephrine. These are alpha receptors and beta receptors. Most postganglionic fibers release norepinephrine, but a few release acetylcholine. Postganglionic fibers innervating sweat glands and blood vessels of skeletal muscles release acetylcholine. The sympathetic division has the following characteristics. 1. Two segmentally arranged sympathetic chains lying lateral to the vertebral column, three collateral ganglia anterior to the vertebral column, and two adrenal medullae. Two preganglionic fibers are relatively short, except for those in the adrenal medullae, while postganglionic fibers are quite long. Three extensive divergence typically occurs with a single preganglionic fiber synapsing with many ganglionic neurons in different ganglia. Four all preganglionic fibers release acetylcholine, while most postganglionic fibers release norepinephrine. And five, effector response depends on the nature and activity of the receptor. The parasympathetic division consists of preganglionic neurons in the brainstem and in sacral segments of the spinal cord, and ganglionic neurons in peripheral ganglia located within or immediately next to target organs. Preganglionic fibers leave the brain in cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10. Cranial nerve 3 is the oculomotor nerve. Cranial nerve 7 is the facial nerve. Cranial nerve 9 is the glossopharyngeal nerve. And cranial nerve 10 is the vagus nerve. Parasympathetic fibers in the oculomotor, facial, and glossopharyngeal nerves help to control visceral structures in the head. These synapse in the ciliary, pterygopalatine, submandibular, and otic ganglia. Fibers in the vagus nerve supply preganglionic parasympathetic innervation to intramural ganglia within structures in the thoracic and abdominopelvic cavity. The pelvic nerves innervate intramural ganglia in the kidney, bladder, and latter parts of the large intestine and sex organs. The effects produced by the parasympathetic division include pupillary constriction, digestive gland secretion, hormone secretion for nutrient absorption, an increase in digestive tract activity, defecation activities, urination activities, respiratory passageway constriction, a reduced heart rate, and sexual arousal. These general functions center upon relaxation, food processing, and energy absorption. 
all of the parasympathetic, preganglionic, and postganglionic fibers release acetylcholine. This acetylcholine is released at synapses and neuroeffector junctions. These effects are short-lived. This is due to the action of enzymes at postsynaptic plasma membranes and in the surrounding tissues. Two different types of acetylcholine receptors are found in postsynaptic plasma membranes. One of these is the nicotinic receptors. These receptors are located on ganglion cells of both divisions of the autonomic nervous system and the neuromuscular synapses. Exposure to acetylcholine causes excitation by opening plasma membrane channels. The other are muscarinic receptors. These are located at neuroeffector junctions in the parasympathetic division and those cholinet and cholinergic neuroeffector junctions in the sympathetic division. Stimulation of muscarinic receptors produces a longer lasting effect than the stimulation of nicotinic receptors. The parasympathetic division has the following characteristics. One, it includes visceral motor nuclei associated with cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10, and sacral segments S2 to S4. Two, ganglionic neurons are located either in terminal ganglia, which terminate near their target organs, or intramural ganglia that target receptors lying within the target organ itself. Three, the parasympathetic division innervates areas serviced by cranial nerves and organs in the thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavities. Four, all parasympathetic neurons are cholinergic as being either muscarinic or nicotinic receptors. And five, effects are usually brief and restricted to specific sites. The sympathetic division has widespread influence reaching visceral and somatic structures throughout the body. The parasympathetic division innervates only visceral structures serviced by cranial nerves or lying within the thoracic and abdominal pelvic cavities. Organs with dual innervation receive instructions from both divisions. In body cavities, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves intermingle to form a series of characteristic nerve plexuses, which are nerve networks. These include the cardiac, pulmonary, esophageal, celiac, inferior mesenteric, and hypogastric plexuses. Important anatomical and physiological differences exist between the sympathetic and parasympathetic divisions of the autonomic nervous system. Visceral reflexes are the simplest functions of the autonomic nervous system. Visceral reflexes can be classified as either long reflexes or short reflexes. They provide autonomic motor responses that can be modified, facilitated, or inhibited by higher centers, such as the hypothalamus. Thank you for watching.